Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. I'm a massive Epiphone fan, you guys know that. And as a massive Epiphone fan, I've been dying to get my hands on as many of these new inspired by Gibson models as possible. A few days ago, I finally managed to demo the flagship of the original collection, the Les Paul Custom. Link in the cards if you haven't seen that. I really liked it. It was almost, almost the guitar that I've been wanting Epiphone to make for years. But now it's time to shift over to the more contemporary side of Epiphone's new lineup. This is the Les Paul Modern. So what makes this more modern than your normal Les Paul, and more importantly, at $649, is it worth your time? Let's take a closer look. So I actually demoed the Gibson Les Paul Modern last year. You can view that video after this one if you want, but basically I wasn't that impressed. No doubt it was a really nice guitar and relatively modern compared to the rest of the lineup, but the improvements weren't that impressive compared to what the rest of the guitar world is doing with the single cut. And at 2,800 bucks, too pricey to be attractive to people who weren't already Gibson fans. And for those existing Gibson fans who already had the classic standard 50s and 60s at about a thousand bucks less. It was modern for a Gibson, but I really didn't see the point to it. However, a $650 accessible Epiphone version, this is a much more interesting proposition. Now, this being about a quarter the price of the US made Gibson, there are obviously gonna be some areas where the Epiphone is not on par with the higher end version, and I'll point those out as we get to them. Firstly, the poly finish. It feels more plasticky than the Gibson Nitro. Not cheap feeling on this model, but definitely not as higher end, which makes sense. So let's start with talking about the specs. Mahogany body with a maple cap. Yup, we've got a proper maple cap on an Epiphone. I remember when something like that was completely out of the question. Mahogany neck with an ebony fingerboard. The body's been weight relieved because modern? So compared to the custom I tried, it's at least a couple of pounds lighter. If I had to guess, it's about eight, eight and a half. Guestimates, that's the kind of quality content you can expect from this scaleless channel. But yeah, it feels sleeker, more manageable on the back, and this comes in the same colors as the Gibson version. The back is natural gloss, and then you've got your choice of faded Pelham blue, graphite black, 
and vintage sparkling burgundy for the top. Love the two-tone color schemes and the tops are all metallic so you get that little bit of shiny reflectiveness. I mean, I was kind of hoping to get the faded Pelham blue because that's my favorite. My local Sam Ash only had this color, but the more time I spend with it, the more I like it. We're uh, stuck together in quarantine and uh, you know, Stockholm Syndrome and all that. Anyways, by now I've said all I can say about the new headstock, so I'm gonna keep it short. Not really a fan compared to the old one, but I concede that it does look better than the last one when there's no binding, like on this model. Then the neck is great. It's one of the best features about this guitar. It's the same asymmetric slim taper found on the Gibson. Thicker at the top, thinner on the bottom, feels super comfortable. And then it's also brought back the modern contoured heel for marginally better upper fret access. The way I view this, it's like, yeah, it's better than the standard big ass neck block, but to be honest, that's kind of a low bar in 2020. You've still got most of the sharp block, so it's kind of like, what's the point? If you're gonna modify the heel for better upper fret access, why half-ass it? You've got the perfectly fine access neck heel, use it. That being said, in my own time, I play a Gibson Les Paul Custom in its full blocky glory, so I guess I don't mind. But if you aren't coming from that block world, I don't think you're gonna be terribly impressed with this solution. We have to talk about the fingerboard though. We've got a nice, dark, hard piece of ebony here. It feels great. Now the compound 10 to 16 inch radius was one of my favorite things about the Gibson. In my opinion, it was one of the few truly modern spec choices on that guitar. Now, unfortunately, and I'm guessing probably due to factory constraints, that compound radius is missing on the Epiphone version. This has the standard uniform 12 inch radius. So really, when it all comes together, to me, this feels not really like the modern counterpart to the Les Paul Custom, but more like an upgraded version of the standard, right? Like a standard with an ebony fingerboard, locking tuners, moderately better upper fret access. Does that make sense? I mean, the point is I love it. I'm just trying to explain it and hopefully succeeding. Now we should talk about quality because it's been one of the main questions about this new lineup. The custom that I demoed was pretty good for the most part, bar a couple of slightly high frets and some minor aesthetic tool marks and die runoff on the fingerboard. This one, you've also got some tool marks on the upper frets and from like six to 12, they seem to be slightly scratchy on the high E side. Not gonna lie, that's pretty disappointing, especially since I like the rest of the guitar. Let's hope that's just early run issues. But if you're looking for consistent quality that'll never let you down, how about today's sponsor, DistroKid. Fuck it, that segue will do. So DistroKid is an amazing service. I use them myself. They are hands down the best way to start making money off your music by getting it onto all the major platforms. Apple Music, Google, Amazon, Spotify. You don't take a percentage cut, you keep all your earnings. And there are an absolute crap load of bonus features. Talked about a few, including Spotify verification through the platform. You know how you can add music to Instagram stories and it'll display the lyrics as the song is playing? That's called synced lyrics. And you can do it right through DistroKid when you upload a song, super easy. Is that nuts or what? I love technology. I don't use Apple Music, but I believe they do something similar as well. And currently DistroKid is the only service in the world that has that feature. So if you make music, you wanna get it out there, you should be using DistroKid. Pricing starts at just 20 bucks a year for unlimited uploads. And if you use the link in the description, you can get a bonus 7% off. They're awesome, not just the team and the service, but also the support for the online music community. They're legit setting the gold standard for getting your music online. And speaking of standards, for the new inspired by Gibson line, Epiphone's upgraded and standardized certain appointments across the entire range. Since this is one of the higher end models, this is always gonna come with Grover tuners and a Graftech nut. So it's got those, but for the first time, at least that I can remember, the Grover tuners are locking, same as the Gibson version. Awesome, that is super, super nice. Not just necessarily for tuning stability or because they look cool with the big thumb screws, but also it's just super convenient for changing strings. Maybe it's just because I'm getting older and lazier, but I legit get slightly but unreasonably annoyed when I have to change strings on a guitar without locking tuners. You have to do the extra winds and stuff. It's just like, why make them locking? So yeah, this particular example, good nut, good tuners, good tuning stability, no issues here. Beyond the standard Epiphone line-wide upgrades, the Modern also has a very versatile wiring scheme. Three of the four pots are push-pull. The two volumes split each respective pro bucker and the neck tone reverses the phase. So basically, if you didn't catch all that, the TLDR is there's a f load of tones on tap. Let's hear every single one. You know the drill, DSL, Precision Drive, Glenn Fricker 4x12 Mesa IR. <laughs>
I, I'm a metal player, and while a lot of people don't mind Pro Buckers, except that they're kind of dark compared to like Gibson Pro Buckers, I don't really bond with them. They're versatile, do a job for just about anything you can throw at them, but for my style of playing, this guitar is begging for a set of fish ones. Actually, I'd like to keep the CTS pots and the insane wiring scheme, so like bare knuckles or black winners. I mean, I don't get to keep this one, but in theory. Something I did notice as well, the control knobs. I like that they're transparent, don't like how they aren't speed knobs, and really don't like how they aren't uniform heights out of the body. Like, it makes sense to have knobs that stick out of the body to make the push-pull functionality easier to access, but on this particular example, the push-pull tone is basically right into the body, which makes it difficult to use that functionality. Minor gripe, but probably something you wouldn't see on the Gibson. And I'm not a wiring guy, so I don't know the full details and how complicated it is, but it is disappointing that they couldn't import the full wiring scheme from the Gibson to include the pure bypass option on the second push-pull tone. Not a huge deal for me at least, since I'm generally just on bridge pickup with the tone wide open anyways, but always better to have than to not. All right, so the Les Paul Custom is probably my favorite style of guitar, or at least right near the top. So when I saw the new lineup at NAMM and on the website, I thought, no question, the Custom would be my favorite. But no, to my surprise, and this is why you don't just go by looks and spec sheets, I like this one way better. It's got the classic single cut shape, which I absolutely adore. And it's just like a sleeker standard. Because of the neck shape, it just feels faster, more comfortable to play. And this is cheaper than the custom too. Locking tuners, ebony board, insane wiring scheme. Wish they did something more with the neck joint, but I get it, it's in the name, inspired by Gibson. I thought the Gibson was just too expensive for what it was. At this price point, this makes much more sense. Honestly, I think this is the best main lineup non-special edition Les Paul Epiphone is made to date. Yeah, it's just, it's just really good. I really like it. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are just my opinions. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It's the big red button down there and it actually really helps out. You can also mash the bell for notifications if you want to see more of my face. Thanks to Sam Ash for making this guitar available, to Luke for mixing everything, and to my Patreon community for supporting what I do. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.